problem is always in what you call them, not in what they do. So they don't like apartheid <laughs> and they fight about the word apartheid. They don't try to stop the apartheid. They don't like ethnic cleansing. They don't like settler colonialism, but that's precisely what they do. Whatever it is that, how, however it is that we define them, they don't like the definition. Their argument is always about the word. They never try, like you say, they never try to stop the actions that are actually the, the you know, the, the expression of what it is that we're calling, you know, it's the action comes first and then people are, are, are making the comparisons. I mean, you know, it's 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 horrifying. It's horrifying, and then they get into all these arguments. Well, the Nazis were worse. The Nazis did more. The Nazis did this. The the apartheid wasn't exactly the same. The apartheid was this. You know, what I mean, they get into these nonsensical arguments about the definition instead of understanding, which of course they, I, I believe, they do understand. They don't want to admit that they are in guy engaged in massive crimes against humanity, and they've been doing so since three years after the Holocaust. In other words, they began three years after the Holocaust ended, engaging in 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 three horrifying crimes against humanity: the ethnic cleansing, the genocide, and the apartheid regime. All three are crimes against humanity. These are horrifying crimes that they've been engaged in from the very beginning. And again, the best they can do is come and argue whether it is apartheid or it isn't apartheid, whether it is this or it isn't that. And, you know, that's that's all they can do. But the problem is they're being allowed to do this. This is allowed. This is being allowed to continue. The the I think the, the chief of the U.S. Of, of the of the of the English army is now in Tel Aviv sitting with his counterpart, the Israeli counterpart. I mean, these are things that really? are just unbelievable. And everybody knows what's going on. You know, it's all over the place. I don't think anybody has any doubt that these are horrifying crimes against humanity. Um, and uh, every every conversation, every interview almost begins with, do you condemn the Palestinians? It's ridiculous. Uh, Dr. Rahmat TV said, uh, Netanyahu will be kicked out of Gaza Street before Palestinians will will, will leave Gaza. You know, they're not going to go anywhere. The Palestinians will not leave. They will die. Another friend of my Palestinian friends, a friend of mine, Yusuf Jamal, wrote a piece uh, a few weeks ago that the the, the road to he heaven is closer than the Sinai. The Palestinians are not leaving. And uh, sadly enough, the entire world is allowing them to be killed, you know, like this. You know, tens of thousands, be, you know, being killed. And they're allowing this conversation to go on. In other words, no, there's no consequence for Netanyahu speaking like this. There's no consequence for the Israelis speaking like this openly. And of course, there's no consequence for the actions either. I mean, they're, they're, they're doing horrific things. And once again, you know, look, watching it in context for 75 years, they've been doing this and they're being, and they're being allowed to do this. And granted, in the beginning, perhaps they weren't as honest about, about their intentions. Um, uh, Palestinians aren't going anywhere. I think the King of Jordan made it absolutely clear that um, the that the that Jordan and Egypt will not will not allow this to happen. And uh, and he said this in the very very beginning. And I don't I don't believe the uh, the Palestinians will will go. And and the thing is, you know, to to people, the, part of the Zionist narrative is that the problem is that Jordan Jordan and Egypt are the problem because they won't allow the Palestinians to go. Or the Arab countries where the Palestinian refugees, refugee camps exist are the problem because they won't allow the Palestinians to become, you know, the problem is Israel. The problem has always been Israel. Israel is the initial crime. Israel does not allow the refugees to return. Israel has been murdering refugees in their camps in Palestine and around Palestine for decades. Israel caused the problem. And somehow everybody is allowing Israel as, as being as allowing Israel to parade itself as though it is some kind of a miracle, some kind of a wonderful democracy, liberal democracy, and nobody is standing up. I mean, seriously, how is it that nobody has called for sanctions against the state of Israel? How is it nobody has called for a no-fly zone over Gaza yet? How is it that the Sixth Fleet, that you know, the U.S. Navy Sixth Fleet that is in the Mediterranean, is not there to protect Palestinians? to protect this massacre of tens of thousands of Palestinians and stop this genocide. How is it that that is not the conversation? How is it that, you know, the UK, which has which has naval vessels in the Mediterranean, isn't coming in to, to step in to stop this massacre of Palestinians? That is, to me, the, the most unbelievable. And these are and this is also something that the, these countries and these leaders are going to pay for later on, because they will have to answer for this.
they will answer for this. But how is it that this hasn't happened yet? How is it that there are no calls in the European Parliament to stop this, to stop this, to, to protect and defend the Palestinian people? There's no guarantees for the safety and security of Palestinians anywhere in Palestine, whether they're citizens of, of the state of Israel, whether they're in the West Bank. There is no one guaranteeing their protection. You can kill a Palestinian in the middle of the day, in the middle of the street, and you will be considered a hero. This is to me the most the most astounding issue here.